Hello, I'm Pete Gerlach. Uh, I have been a professional family therapist for 31 years, almost 32, been on the planet for 73 years. During that time, the time my time as a therapist, I specialized in working with divorced families and step families, and more recently, dysfunctional families of all types. I want to offer you in this video, as in a number of related videos, what I've learned about the highly challenging process of forming and maintaining a functional or healthy step family. In this video, I want to highlight um, what members of a brand new step family have to merge in order to become a solid, cohesive, new functional family. Stay tuned. Um, for perspective, most step families, in America at least, follow the divorce of one or both new mates. Um, when a step family begins, when a single parent, either widowed or divorced, gets real interested in a new partner and considers committing again. When that happens, an amazingly complicated merger of each of these two adults' extended families, meaning grandparents, parents, kids, aunts, uncles, cousins, they start to combine those two families and the family of the divorced parents' ex-spouse. So there are at least three biological families uh, sometimes four or even five biological families that start to merge when dating starts to get serious. Um, for your perspective, in a average, a typical three biofamily step family, there may be as many as 60 people, grandparents, adult kids, kids, aunts, uncles, if there are 60 people, uh, there can be 1,770 relationships that have to get adjusted. You can figure out how many relationships there are in your family. Look, count the number of people, um, take the number of people and subtract 1. So 60 minus 59, and then divide that number by 2. That's how I got 1,770 out of 60 people. Try that with your own family. You'll be surprised. That's a lot of people and a lot of relationships that have to adjust to the following things. People have to decide who now belongs to my family. Who are we? Um, before, we were just the Mendoza family. Now we're the Mendoza Chang Leibowitz family. Who belongs to this family? So sorting out and stabilizing who are we, who are our memberships, who, who are our members? Uh, and, and adjacent to that is who, what is our identity now? We used to be just an average family or an average Irish Catholic family or a good Pennsylvania Dutch family. Now we are uh, combined of three different cultures, several different religions, who are we? So people have to adjust their family identity as well as their membership. As they do that, they usually have to, these 60 people, hypothetically, need to adjust their names and their titles. It's not too uncommon to have a step-parent and a stepchild have the same first name. Sometimes um, women, when they remarry, uh, keep their old married name or even revert to their maiden name. That means their children have a different last name than their own mother. Um, there are many variations of this, but simply names is a category of things that people in new step families have to sort out. A related thing they have to sort out is titles, family titles. For instance, when you say grandmother, are you referring to your grandmother 
your stepchild's grandmother, or your new mate's grandmother. Who are you talking about? People have to learn to differentiate among their roles, incidentally. Just to make this interesting, step families have up to 30 different role titles. Step cousin, step uncle, step great grandmother, step sibling. This gets pretty complicated. Many people have no training in how to sort these things out. New step families have to take different customs and traditions and rituals and combine them over several years. How do we do Thanksgiving now? How do we do December? Do we do Hanukkah? Do we do Christmas? Do we do Kwanzaa? What do we do? And who does it? And when? And who's in charge? Um, that's a subset of a larger thing that step family people have to merge, which is simply the broad category of values and priorities. Well, we're a thrifty New England family. We value paying with cash. Well, we don't think that's so important. We pay with credit cards. That is a broad, common kind of a values conflict. How do you sort that out? How do you stabilize it? Who's in charge of deciding how you compromise or stabilize that? So you have to figure out um, now what are our values as a group, as a household, as a family, and what are our priorities now? Are they different or are they the same as before uh, Jose and Maria decided to remarry? Every family is composed of roles, R-O-L-E-S. Um, mother and father, grandfather, son, daughter are conventional roles. These shift typically when a new step family is born. For example, if I'm uh, the father of two children and I marry a woman with four children, now I am both a biological father and a stepfather. How do I sort those two different roles out? Are they different? Are they the same? If they're different, how are they different? Where do I put my priorities? Who comes first? So there's a lot, that's just one example of many, many variations of how to merge different family roles in three or more biological families over a period of years. In addition to roles, new, fam new step family members must also emerge over a period of years. There are many rules. All families, all healthy families anyway, are guided by a set of unspoken and spoken rules. This is one week where we have dinner. This is how we walk the dog. This is who does the laundry. Scores and scores of small and large rules. When several different biological families combine to form a step family, often many of these rules clash between one family and another. So the members need to identify the clashes, accept them, and sort them out and resolve them. Um, there can be lots of rules, for instance, with high emotional content around money. Some families are frugal, some families are not. Some families spend a lot, uh, save a lot. Others don't think that's very important. Uh, there can be lots of rules associated with worship, with mealtime, with shopping, with cleaning, with socializing, with educating children, like discipline. All kinds of rules. So combining three families um, often can cause a great deal of confusion and conflict over roles and rules. Those are very closely related. Another thing that's related, as families combine, are loyalties. Loyalty conflicts are one of the most widely um, commented on stressors of typical step families. A loyalty conflict looks like this. Uh, you're a, an 11-year-old boy or girl. Your step-parent says, you should do X. 
your biological parent says, no, you should do Y. Who do you side with? Do you throw your hands up? Uh, do you freeze up? Do you run away? How do you handle that? Who are you loyalty loyal to? Everyone in a step family is subject to loyalty conflicts, not just kids. Um, see my video on what they are and how to resolve them. It's one of many things that people have to merge as they combine their biological families into a new step family. Loyalties. These mergers cause a whole variety over four or more years from the time dating gets serious, values conflicts, loyalty conflicts, membership conflicts, who belongs to our family? Oh no, who doesn't? And relationship triangles cause a great deal of stress in individual homes and between homes. There's no school that tells adults how to spot and resolve these, so people have to invent their own ways. I hope you'll take a look at my videos that show you how I propose successful adults deal with these four kinds of merger conflicts. Incidentally, notice just for fun that even as a step family stabilizes for merging these various things, membership, identity, names, titles, customs, traditions, values, priorities, roles, rules, loyalties, even as a step family stabilizes these, each time a member of a step family leaves home, marries, divorces, has a baby, dies, retires, moves, many of these things get revised again. Never a dull moment. I hope this um, encourages you that awareness of what's going on in your home and between your homes is a great asset in typical in any family, but especially in step families. Um, so what? This is all very interesting, but what does it mean? If you are considering forming a step family, or if you're considering enlarging a step family, I urge you, learn, accept your step family identity, don't shrug it off or minimize it, we are a step family. Use that to identify um, realities, turn 60 myths into realities and learn what you're doing. Step family couples, clarify your priorities. Put your personal integrities first, your primary relationship second if you want it to last, and everything else third, including your kids, unless there's an emergency. The rationale here is, if you don't, your family's likely to break up and cause your kids more heartache and loss. Finally, I urge you, all of you, all of the adults in your step family, learn how to identify and manage loyalty, values, membership conflicts, and relationship triangles. See my videos and my web articles on how to do that. Finally, Enjoy the whole bumpy, confusing, exciting, rich, fulfilling process. Welcome to the world of step families.